It's sleek, it's post-apocalyptic. It's a David Best rocket car. Burning Man is apparently saying that they want to try and green up their act. We decided to help with the conversion of this iconic car. Hi, I'm Marcos Ramirez. Welcome to the Ruckus Ramirez channel. The first project on our channel is the electrification of the David Best rocket car. Well, here it is. It has been running in a little bit. Ah, Burning Man. As of today, we have two months and some change. Why? Okay, let's load this thing. I've been involved in the electric vehicle space since 2009. I merged my world of cars and automotive stuff with this sense of knowing that gas needed to go away. Oh yeah. That's just gonna come right out of there. I've worked on all sorts of electric vehicle projects, including high profile projects like Simone's Truckla and many other things, including electric racing projects, electric motorcycle integration with platforms from Zero Motorcycles. I've worked with Adam Savage from Tested. I've been around. Previously, there were no options for art cars other than to have a gas guzzling car. So for instance, this particular car, it's based on a 1979 Cadillac Seville. Oh yeah, look at that. Using a trailer we've never used before. Come to me. Yeah, there we go. Oh my God, she's a dusty That can't be helpful. <laughs> All right, go that way. Go that way, like I have any say. <laughs> Originally, the steering wheel wasn't attached. It was rougher than I thought. All sorts of things were falling off of it. It was a mess. Okay, uh, stop. It's, it's... Fancy piece okay. of fancy to... piece of artwork here. Then we can build up some here now. Oh my god, it smells like cat pee over here. Why do I keep lying in the cat pee? <laughs> oh, Dad, look at you. Oh, look at that. I knew it was going to be a mess, but you know, like many things in life. Even when you think you know, it's oftentimes much worse <laughs> than you originally thought. Oh. Oh. Burning Man is an annual art festival that happens out in the Nevada desert on Paiute and Shoshone land. And David Best is a very well-known acclaimed artist within the Burning Man community. Not only has he had a long career of making art cars, but he's also made many, many installation and sculptural pieces as well. In the year 2000, David Best created the very first temple. And for anyone since 2000 that's gone to Burning Man, they know that the temple has such a huge and profound meaning. They'll know that the temple is an incredible space that really changes the whole sense of what happens at Burning Man. The temples and what David did with the temples actually made Burning Man have meaning far beyond it had ever had before. I had an opportunity to talk to David at length about his career, and apparently he's made a whole ton of cars. This is the first real car. A real car, I, yeah. lo I love that. Well, yeah. so how many art cars do you think you've built over there? 40. 40? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Man, I've only built a handful of cars and... <laughs> but they're junk, you know? Somebody said, hey, does anybody want to do a conversion on a well-known uh, Burning Man car? And at first I was like, oh man, is this like a shag carpet dildo with a queen size bed? And, uh, and then I saw the picture of the car and I was like, oh, I know this car. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I got excited about it, but I was also, I wanted to let you know, I mean, this was... Yeah, that um, means something. Burning Man what? during the pandemic said they would run out of money. And so this car was donated by David to Sotheby's to go to auction to make money at a fundraiser for Burning Man. It was right there on the edge of being a piece of art that was going to be lost with decades of really amazing moments that people have shared with this vehicle, amazing crews, 
all the people that have worked on this car. There's something in particular about this car that evokes an emotional response that I share. The public shares, burners, everyone has a similar emotional response to this car. It looks like it's gonna be really easy to work on. It's not going anywhere. Okay, here we go up to Humboldt. Good luck. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna need it. The trailer was not originally designed for hauling this vehicle. There are many things that we were worried about on the way up. Day one. That was a day. That was a day. First right. day. We got it. <laughs> It's too large an object and it's dangerous. It's just cumbersome. This is a land yacht. I think it's been driving itself for years. Wait, other way. Let's let's leave it and let's uh dude, I'm super stressed about this project. Can we take a break and maybe go to the river or something? Yeah. Go. Yeah, it's time anyway. Nice. Taking a quick break to uh, say like and subscribe. Uh, we got more build on the way. Stay tuned. Uh, this is not AI. I'm actually, I'm actually sitting in the river. <laughs> I first went to Burning Man in 1999 with some friends. You know, you fight in Thunderdome. That was back when we had No-No uh, the Naughty Ape. You know, people hanging from shark hooks with big barbells in their, their... Lacey, why don't you go ahead and, and go for it? Normally when Burning Man rolls around, I'm kind of just helping folks out. People call me for last minute project. Gross. Whatever people need help with, I help people out. And the Bay Area empties out and all of us collectively have a sigh of relief as we're able to park in San Francisco. I've also been an event producer in the Bay Area for many, many years. I was in the movie Groove starring Nick Offerman of all people. I'm no stranger to the Bay Area event scene, party scene, rave scene. This is like part of my life and it has been for decades. Almost all burners are ravers, but not all ravers are burners. And I probably fall into that latter camp, but Burning Man is all around us. This is a 30 foot vehicle. So just the idea of how we were able to get it in the shop was difficult. We had to measure and mock things up and uh, bring heavy equipment into the interior space of the shop just to be able to get the vehicle in the air. I don't want the strap to hit the side of the tube, so I want to secure from a lower point. How was that? Ross and I have to slog through many discussions and zooming around in CAD. This is the two inch bar at the radiator. This is the sway bar. Using the Samurai transfer case in this orientation allows us to use it like a drop box. So Just finding all the necessary parts, what's gonna be recycled, which parts are brand new. We had to talk to a Suzuki Samurai expert. All the things that happen with making a custom car. Yeah. All those discussions Short had to happen before we could even get started. Transfer case, drive line. One of the more difficult things, even just at the beginning of this project, was just getting the gas motor out. We're gonna actually make this. Okay. Because <laughs> we're gonna be like, and then it's gonna be like, and then you can see something in there. 
just finding a quiet moment to feel the weight of it. <laughs> As a bonus, if I need to disappear, I can just Shawshank. <laughs> yeah, because I think this will be okay yeah. for working underneath, because at least... Yeah, just to make it a little safer. You know that thing I said two seconds ago about not being a dick and not having wanting to cut stuff off? But when you weld it directly to the car, I'm gonna have to cut it off. <laughs> we then began the huge effort of tearing out all the original gas components. Weren't you making fun about my uh, catalytic converter? Right now I'm just kind of looking around back here, but pulling brackets, we just pulled the exhaust off. It was a balance between tearing out the original Cadillac parts and preserving all the parts of the car that gave it charm. Um, I'm not a Cadillac expert. I have no idea. What is this? A 500? What's the, what is the, what were the Cadillac motors? That's I forget. True. I don't know. And when fuel happens, it's always a mess. We got a problem here. The transmission adapter on the Toyota put these terminals at an angle. Like this? Okay. Is that the last bolt? Uh, no. Oh, I didn't order the parts, Marcos. They're not coming. What are we even doing here? We're in a confined space in a small shop. We had to use a great all with an extension on a boom to pull the, the engine out. I like how I like how you can stop, you can jump on the back and it <laughs> like like Pee Wee Herman with the bike. You remember the chain scene? No? <laughs> Where he endlessly pulls the chain out to chain up his bicycle? Oh God, it's gross. Now we have to do everything else. <laughs> but the motor's out. Uh, take, take this shit outside. We just wrapped up episode one. Please like and subscribe and join us for episode two coming shortly. <laughs> More rocket car to come. <laughs>